Nearly two decades after venturing into coffee farming, farmers in Samsi got a reliable market within the country. Mountain Cafe and Roastery in Paro has started buying their coffee cherries, reviving their interest to grow coffee again. One of the first coffee growers in Pemalingeok in Samsi is 50-year-old Mina Kumari Sarki. She started with 10 saplings in her backyard. Three years later, when the plants started fruiting, there was no market. She had no idea how to make it edible either. And just like that, it went to waste every year. Last year, I got over 40 kilograms of coffee beans, but it all went to waste. Like Mina, 42-year-old Tika Gurung is also among the many who saw coffee farming as an alternate source of income. She said growing coffee is easier than growing vegetables and other cash crops. Earlier, our source of income was orange, but the yield had been reducing every year. Moreover, we lose most of it to the monkeys, whereas only goats and cows eat the leaves of coffee. It is much easier to grow coffee for now. We have to water the plants during the dry season and put some manure. That's it. Farmers in Pemalingyog received 10 coffee saplings each in 2003. However, Tika Gurung said most of the farmers gave up since there was no market, even when the harvest was bountiful. And for those who never gave up, they were not disappointed. The market for the coffee finally arrived in the form of a businessman from Paro. Last year, he collected over 3,000 kilograms of coffee cherries from them. <laughs> We harvest coffee beans starting October till February. We can harvest it thrice in a year. There are almost 200 families with coffee plants. Some have five plants while some have hundreds. I paid 60 newton a kilogram. His love for coffee drove him to start a cafe in 2016 in Parutang. But the love story started turning bitter when the best brand of coffee failed to make his patrons happy. That is when he decided to produce coffee. He bought two acres of land in Samsi to grow coffee on large scale. I've constructed a nursery and raised over 20,000 coffee saplings. I sought state land on lease to transplant the coffee plants, but I didn't get the land. Then I supplied the saplings to the people, assuring them that I would buy back the product in three years as it starts fruiting in three years. We also made an agreement. He took a loan of nearly 6 million Niltrum to buy raw materials and procure machinery for roasting and packaging. Karma says if all goes well, he will replace the imported coffee in the local market and export as well. I've been getting orders and inquiries asking for coffee in bulk from abroad. Unfortunately, I'm not able to do so. And looks like I won't be able to do that for the next three years. I'm hopeful that after three years when my plants start fruiting, I'll be able to meet their demands. For now, I'm not able to meet even the local demand. I'm focusing on producing and branding organic coffee. It is quite a journey to put a steaming cup of coffee on the table. And the excitement is more when the coffee on the table is roasted and brewed locally. There is a pride that the coffee you are sipping will not only help the farmers, but will also contribute to the country's economy. For Namigomachu in Paro, Chiku for BBS News.